federal agencies are implementing a recently issued executive order to accelerate U.S. biotechnology and manufacturing. It's meant to harness the power of biology to create new services and products like medical supplies, sustainable new fuels, and technologies to help fight climate change. Teresa Good is a division director for the National Science Foundation's Directorate for Biological Sciences. Teresa, welcome. Thank you, Mimi. It's great to be here. We hear a lot about biotechnology and biomanufacturing. What does that mean? What are the products and services that it actually covers? Great. At NSF, we think of biotechnology as the tools, the data, the research infrastructure, the workforce capacity, um, all of that, all of those innovations that enable us to transform biological systems into useful products. Said more simply, really, biology has this tremendous capacity to reproduce, to evolve, to adapt, to respond to the environment. And what we hope we can do with that is harness that power of biotechnology, our biology in, in biotechnology to solve problems like mitigating climate change, to feeding the planet sustainably, to creating resilient supply chains, to creating new jobs um, in the bioeconomy that will serve all of society. So why now? Why is it so critical to start investing now? So there have been tremendous changes in in the kind of in biotechnology over the past decade or so that really over a, a decade ago we didn't have tools like genome editing and CRISPR that now enable us to pr precisely manipulate genomes. Uh, we couldn't sequence genomes at the rate that we can. We could not. Uh, synthesize DNA at the rate we can, and now there's tremendous capacity um, uh, in the technology to really advance, um, but we risk falling behind that uh, other countries have invested a lot. The U.S. is great at innovating, but the U.S. has fallen behind, perhaps, in translating those innovations into those societal solutions. You know that right now, We've invested in biotechnology discoveries. We've invested in artificial intelligence. We have the capacity to engage all members of society in biotechnology that we can include citizen science uh, to enable people at their computers to help fold proteins that are important in, in creating the next vaccines. We can engage them in doing do-it-yourself science in labs around the country. Um, and really, there's an opportunity if we coordinate, if we invest, um, if we translate the, the discoveries and the innovations to really make a big difference in society. Well, well, speaking of investment, how does the U.S. compare to other countries, and you know I'm talking about China, when it comes to the level investment uh, in biotechnology? So the, the U.S. Uh, really has done a great job in investing in the discoveries and the use-inspired research. We have, I think we are at the forefront still. Uh, in the world, but in terms of translation, uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of that capacity to scale up, we have fallen behind. Um, and I think that uh, that China is just investing a tremendous amount. I think that it's really important for all nations that that we kind of uh, develop a standard set of ethics and kind of best practices so that we ensure that there is safe, equitable distribution of the benefits of biotechnology. So what do you think are the biggest challenges to, in the biotech industry right now? So I think there are a couple. I think that uh, workforce development, I think that not everyone has been able to participate in the bioeconomy. I think that we really need to work hard to ensure that we are inclusive, that we engage the public in co-creation of those innovations that are going to solve problems like feeding the planet, like creating life-saving medicines. So I think that it's really important. I think that there is an issue of trust of science. And so, again, engaging the public, including more people in co-creation of that knowledge. I think there's also an issue of infrastructure and of scale-up capacity that while we did tremendous things in the, the country in terms of preparing or, you know, vaccines for the pandemic. I think that the, there isn't sufficient capacity now to, to translate all of the innovations that people are making in the lab to the marketplace. And, and then that brings us to the NSF's role. Right. So, um, so 
We are, you know, NSF's foundations have always been in basic and use-inspired research, that that's kind of our bread and butter, that we are really proud of the investments we made in people like Jennifer Doudna, um, you know, uh, before she, you know, got her Nobel Prize for her work on CRISPR and genome editing of our investments and other people like Francis Arnold and, and many others that we, and that those investments we make in basic research help lead to those discoveries and innovations that are going to fuel the bioeconomy. But within the framework of this new executive order, NSF is charged to work across agencies to identify what are those cross-cutting themes that will enable all sectors of the bioeconomy, from health, from food, to climate change, to all of that, and, and manufacturing, that we are charged to play a role in workforce development, and I think that that's really going to be important. We need, we need diverse um, STEM talent to fuel the bioeconomy, that there is a role for us as well in open data and, you know, and uh, data initiatives, there's a role for us in the international space as well. And I wanted to ask you real quick about the Regional Innovation Engine Program. Yes, absolutely. Quickly, that. what is that? So, you know, NSF, the, the big new thing at NSF is our new directorate, Technology, Innovation, and Partnerships, and their flagship program are these Regional Innovation Engines. And so what we hope through them is that we can build regional economies that we can, that will really impact all of the nation, that they'll be hopefully spread throughout the U.S., that, that many of the new kind of the initial applications in that space have come in in the biotechnology space, and so we're really excited about what's the potential of building regional economies through partnerships um, in our investments in these regional innovation engines. All right, Teresa, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.